So say up is me going all the way up. And up here is me going all the way up. So high emotion, like happy emotion or energetic with a high tone. But if I go like this, I am still all the way up in terms of energy. But I'm perfectly in the middle. Right now, perfectly in the middle. And then when I go down, I go down, but my energy is there. The next summer, take this movie and enjoy it for whatever it is. It's a piece of shit made by some guy who had a lot of money. And then when I go all the way down, I'm still here down, but then in the middle there. And then I go all the way down, and now I'm going down, and I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. I honestly don't understand what's going on. But seriously... I'm just going down. I don't understand. But you know what? Maybe it's going to be an okay day. Maybe it's going to be better. Maybe it's going to be incredible. And maybe it's going to be even incredible on the next day. So please, always follow us. Make sure that you're with us. And always remember yourself. You do realize that you've just given me 18 different thumbnails for this <laughs> podcast. guys welcome to another episode of jibble with jabba today i have a very interesting episode for you and a very interesting young man who who basically is you could call him one of the many voices of dubai um ahmed how are you doing doing pretty good how's everything pretty good you know we were having a conversation before off cam and, and it became really interesting to me because i was like okay so what can we talk about that you've done because you've done a lot of a lot of the the, the, the branding and stuff for a lot of the things here um, and you're like, well, I can't talk about some of this and some of that. Why can't you talk about certain brands? What's the reason behind that? The country, first of all, is just introducing a lot of uh, media oriented laws and how things actually function, and who mm. says what and why, because defamation is a big deal here and people take it very serious. So whenever I started doing uh, a lot of interviews and stuff like that, I was just talking about whatever. Mm. You know what I mean? And then uh, one of my clients would be like, hey, you know, like, should have talked to us about that. You know, we wanted to be a part of it. I, I think that uh, to some extent they want to, like, pitch some product or have me talk mm. in a particular way about their brand. And I believe that's the core as to why someone would be like, oh, no, our image is so important. And that brings me to Dubai itself is an image based place. Mm. And uh, that makes me a little bit sad. I'm not going to lie to you. It does. Really? It really does. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a lot of you know, this image and that image and this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm doing. And, and it could be much more, like, a lot more beautiful if it had um, the right structure behind it or the right intent behind it, per se. And I think Dubai will evolve to that eventually. I feel it. I see it in front of my eyes. But to some extent, it's it's still, it's still an infant in a way. Yeah, I totally get what you're saying. But at the same time, it, it is also a case of which which life you choose to live because out here depending on your circles and the type of people you want you can live that fleshy life you can go out and spend stupid amounts of money at nobu um but you know when my wife was like let's go to nobu i'm like no we're not going to <laughs> we're not going there. Do you know what I mean? it's, 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 it's a bit it's a bit it too much sense. It's Benga's bit telling too me much. something about my shirt i think you're telling me that my shoulders are so massive that they're making the shirt crease <laughs> the other side huh my sing yeah, of course, my prison singlet. Let it go, bro. That's fine, man. That's how it is. People need to know I'm also gangster as well as as well as nice. You know, that's how it is. It's got to be. Um, yeah. So depending on on what what you choose, um, a lot of people are. I, I understand what you're doing. Image driven in this country. Yeah. There yeah, is yeah. a case of kind of like, what what have I got? And a lot of them, it's quite funny because a lot of them are. You find the people who do it most are the people that weren't doing so well in their own countries. Yes. They're luckily doing well here because they came at a time where being somebody from abroad kind of paid well or whatever and they're kind of like wanting to push it in the faces of of you know back home kind of thing like look, what I, look what I became look what I became and yeah. what I've done yeah. the whole idea of look at what I've became has been uh, one of my main uh, psychological struggles for the past few years as I introduce myself a little bit more it's uh, you know I've gotten to one step after another without realizing per se because I've just mm. been working basically and uh, the way I sort of take all that data in and try to, you know, like analyze it, it, the more deep I've seen like other people sort of act in real life, like how they take that data themselves and then analyze it and then act upon it. Mm. And then I realize I have this uh, place in my mind that's always going to remain sane enough for me to really be able to think about things. Mm. So that's also based on your point as well when it comes to like, you know, Dubai with these people coming in and all of that, it makes perfect sense. And even to an extent, you can sort of feel that people really want to leave in a bit of a, not just an image, but rather 
they want to leave something here that matters in a way because so many people come and go. It's like an airport. The whole country mm. is pretty much an airport. And uh, yeah, I find that to be very interesting. Again, it is growing in a way, but like there isn't enough focus on, you know, a few things here and there. Yeah, but look, luckily you have stuff like the recession, which is God's way of going, calm down, little man, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> you got excited and the bank loans are starting to show. Do you know what I mean? So you, you get these things that kind of put people in their place. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about what you do, how you started your career and, and what you do, because <clears throat> I said what you do twice there, but it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> Because you do voiceovers, you do sonic branding, yeah. you do, you know, uh, production for, for movies, you, yeah. do, you do a lot of stuff. Yeah. How did you get into that in the first place? Because how, how does somebody find out, hey, I've got a sexy voice or I want to <laughs> I, I do voiceovers or... Um, there's a bunch of stages to this, but mainly I'm into guitars and pianos and stuff since I was like eight, nine. And that was, that was pretty cool because my, my mom and dad really sort of helped me out, my sister as well. Uh, my brother, pretty much my whole family, everybody's sort of like, you know what, let Ahmad do his thing because I'm like the youngest in the family. Mm -hmm. So I always like got a bit of privilege here and there. And around like 14, 15, I started thinking to myself, like, um, you know, what my dad gives me daily, very grateful, but not enough. So mm -hmm. I got to find a way to make some money. And during that period of time, uh, I had a music teacher and then I went into a conservatory, but I was kicked out. I was kicked out because I didn't sort of like following rules in a particular way. <coughs> and uh, my teacher, you know, tried once and twice and a few times. And I made this lovely melody that he says is wrong, technically. Mm. And I just couldn't accept that. Like my tiny weenie brain could not accept that this gorgeous thingy is wrong in any way. I'm like, no, it's subjective. So I started, you know, with that mentality. And around 15, 16, I was teaching a bunch of kids trying to make some money. And one of the kids, uh, Anthony, lovely guy. Uh, was I think uh, 17 or 18 at the time he was working had some money lived with his family and he sort of heard about me he's like yo teach me everybody's telling me you teach in a different way by different way I just sort of make them feel the instrument rather than understand it mm. and that worked out man and then, mean by feel the instrument that you're just sitting there is it more like you're just you're all around the fire and you're like okay today's lesson <laughs> it's like one of the you know the Jackie Chan movies where he's teaching he's like pick up your jacket throw it on the floor pick up your jacket he's like what's this what is wax on wax off got to do with it you're like listen stroke your guitar oh, don't man. play the strings don't play the strings just feel it Put the, who's just got the baby it. who's got the baby oil uh, rub the guitar rub like, the guitar take yeah, care of it exactly, exactly yeah. is it gonna work it was it was sort of like you know I teach them how to like hand placements and playing chords mm. and whatever I knew at the time very well, but I was I was more into like you gotta you know if if you exceed velocity in this note or a push or whatever mm. it's just a lot of made up stuff in my head that I thought made a difference, mm. but now that I do it it does, <laughs> but yeah. like you also need to have the theory stuff which. I am now finally deciding, like, halas, like, mm. you need to it's start, to, yeah. you need to start, really, yeah. So, uh, yeah, but after that, uh, I got, so this kid told me one day after I was teaching for two months, he's like, yo, listen, there's this event thing that's happening, and they're casting kids, uh, our ages, from our area, Tripoli in Lebanon, to play in a song for a guy called Melhem Zain, who's a very famous musician. Never heard of a guy in my life. I'm not into that kind of stuff. And I was like 15, 16. I'm like, yeah, I need the money from this guy. Yeah. So I'm going. I'm going to go support him. Be like, ooh, you yeah. go, whatever. So I went there with my guitar after our lesson. And, you know, we were chilling and that. And then he went into the line. And I went on the side. There was a small little fountain there. It's a tiny man-made fountain. I was sitting there. I was chilling. And then this woman comes towards me. Uh, this awesome, like, redhead. And I was a kid. And she was like, you know, a, a proper woman. She's like, you can't sit there and I'm like uh, I, I can't sit there she's like you just can't sit there why aren't you with the kids you should be with the kids and I'm like oh I'm, I'm not here to audition I'm actually his teacher and then she looked at the guy and the guy is tall like as tall as you yeah. even taller like proper tall yeah. she's like you're teaching him I'm like yeah she's like how old are you I'm like I'm 15 she's like really I'm like yeah she's like well how long have you been playing I'm like you know since I was like 9 I've been playing since 8, 9 she's like show me Right there on the spot. I'm like, yeah. okay, that was a little bit, you know, but I'm always one for let's go. Yeah. Took out my guitar, start playing some melodies. And she's like, can you play me this song or that song? I'm like, oh, I don't actually know other people's music. I just sort of make new stuff. And she's like, why? I'm like, because every time I pick up a guitar, something new is going to happen. And she liked that. Mm. She liked that answer. So she's like, okay, play me something. I'm like, how about happy? She's like, yeah. And I went, dun, dun, da, da, dun, dun, da, 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 dun, da, you know, just some melody. And then the guy uh, who was following her, he came and he's like, yo, this is happening and that. 
And then she's like, no, no, wait, wait, wait. We need to get him. He needs to meet this kid. What's your name? I'm like, Ahmed. It's like, okay, you wait here. I'm like, all right. And then she gets this guy, big, buffy guy. Looks like he's somebody, you know? Mm-hmm. He's like, tuxedo. Not tuxedo, but like, you know, a suit and all. Mm-hmm. He's like, hey, I'm like, hi, I'm looking up at him. Guy's massive, and I'm mm. sitting down. I'm tiny, you know, had glasses. No, I sort of had glasses at the time. <laughs> it sort of had glasses. You had a monocle. Just I had a monocle. <laughs> the on and off <laughs> yeah, period, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's like, what's your name? I'm like, Ahmad. I'm like, what's your name? And then everybody started laughing. I'm like, why is everybody? He's like, I'm Al-Hamzan. I'm like, ah, you're the guy. Mm-hmm. You're the dude. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool. What's up? And he's like, yo, uh, can you like they're telling me you can do this and that i'm like yeah i can and then it's like all right can you play me you know a thing and i played him a few things and he's like this is him mm-hmm. and i won it over all the those guys nice. needless to say he was no longer my student yes, that, <laughs> after yeah, that Adrian night stole my, <laughs> my gig from me i yeah. took his gig and uh the people in beirut who were uh shout out to sarkis for uh seeing what he saw in me i ended up sort of doing uh that song and it ended up being known and i got picked up by the big the, the big guys uh, Jean-Marie Rieschi shout out uh, Sarkis from SAS Pro shout out and a bunch of other important people and I started getting gigs it started off bit by bit but then it became a full blown thing by the time I was 16 and a half was making sort of like melodies that can be ex- like idea batches or raw like the seed of an idea I was making seeds basically and selling it to them and I made like five or six at the time and then I they tell me where it went and I ended up like making music for people like Nancy Ajram, uh, Elisa, Haifa Wahbe, Najwa Karam, Amal Hamzan is mentioned, and a bunch of others. It was, it was, uh, it was insane. It was insane. And during that time, my friends sort of, you know, realized what was going on with me, and they liked it. And I was a failure at school, like mm. an actual failure at school. And after I failed my second year in a row at school, my mom and my dad were like, "This is not cool." But at the same time, I was sort of doing yeah. that. So they're like, "Okay, he's making money, yeah. but education, it's you not know." Cool. Nancy Ajram mom. Nancy Ajram mom, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like, so funny story. When I was playing with her once, it was it was a private gig, and uh, after like I finished, I be- before I went there, because uh, it's in like a place called Zumkeil. It's like a bit before Beirut, mm. and I'm from Tripoli, so it's a hell of a ride, uh, you know. So I went. I took the bus, and I told my best friend at the time, uh, bless his soul, uh, Ahmad. I told him, listen, mom calls. I'm, you know, I'm sleeping over and all that. He's like, yeah, yeah. I told my mom I'm sleeping there. She calls him. He's like, yeah, yo, uh, you know, it's all good. Where's Ahmed? He's like, oh, Ahmed's here. Don't worry about him. Yeah. And she's like, she bought it. And she was like, all right, you know, like, because this is my best friend. I sleep over like five times a week, yeah. you know? So I went and I did the thing or whatever. Halfway through, my mom called again for whatever reason. And she's like, okay, so just tell Ahmed he needs to be tomorrow, this and that. I and mean, he's like, yeah, Ahmed's playing guitar and whatever. I don't want to bother yeah. him. He's like, yeah, just tell him. And then when uh, basically the news that my dad religiously watches, we ended up, they end up uh, seeing a show with Nancy Ajram that was <laughs> live for this private event. And, you know, it's her, a bunch of girls dancing around and stuff like that. And there was me with my guitar, my oh, bright orange, yeah, yeah. custom made, you can see it from a million miles away guitar. And my dad was like, isn't that Ahmad? And my mom was like, huh? Is that him? And then they like realized and like, what the hell? And then, yeah, I sort of got caught. And that's yeah. when I had to cough that up. And uh, that, that that's really where things kicked off for me. But I mean, look, that's a good way to get in trouble. Because there's two ways that can happen. <laughs> One, they could be watching cops. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. bad boys, bad boys. boys what what you going to do? do? And it's like... It's, isn't that Ahmed? <laughs> <laughs> He's supposed to be there. You were in handcuffs. You'd be like, you can't hold me forever. <laughs> I didn't do it. I didn't do, you know do I mean? it. It's that. And there's, oh, look, our son's playing with Nancy Aja. And one thing he said is, there's levels there's to a, the lie. There's a you unique know? little. It's better. Like, I've yeah. had much worse lies than My that. mom called me. She's like, what the hell are you doing there? Yeah. It's super angry. She's like, can you get me an autograph? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, what are you doing? Get it. <laughs> can I speak to Nancy just for a quick little bit? <laughs> pretty yeah. much. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Wow. So, yeah. So it was basically. That was the entry point. At that age, at 15, that's quite a yeah. I got well a big lucky. thing to be doing at, at, I got that, well at lucky, that age. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of the start for your Sonic branding kind of thing? or so the Because whole, like you said, you were doing smaller kind of ideas yes, and that kind yes. of thing. So that kind of ties into the whole, you know, let's talk about what Sonic branding is um, cool. for a lot of people that don't know. So, I mean, I know a couple of things that you've done that you can't mention. One of them 
I used to like now annoys me because every time I'm trying to fix my phone bill, I have to listen to it all the time while I'm on hold. Pretty um, much. Yeah, so we're not going to say which phone company it is or whatever. Um, we're not annoyed with you yeah, in exactly. any way, shape or form. You know. So how did you get into that? Where, where did that come into? Oh, man, that's the interesting part of the story. I was with a, with a lovely company uh when i first got here um at 20 uh, my brother took care of me and it was it was it was pretty all right but then what happened was i i was doing like some music stuff for this company i was an employee there and around a bit in half a year in or so uh things weren't working out i felt very limited mm. i felt you know like the whole be here on time and I, it's, it's not gonna happen obviously you're lying to your mom i'm going to concerts it's exactly. not gonna be like you I'm can't not, hold me down i am not that you kind saw of me guy. on cops i'm not that guy exactly <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm not that yeah. dude so at some point i'm like i'm doing my own thing and then i just sort of like you know started doing that i started talking to people i can do this i can do that my main focus was making music because i started seeing these advert this music for advertisements and i started really like going into that and whatever at that point the idea of sonic branding uh, like I knew it because of McDonald's I'm love and you know mm. and all those other stuff uh, I really wanted to like get into it so I was pretty much talking to anybody who would listen to me to give me a chance even for a penny a pretty mm. penny but then I struck gold with Dubai theme parks and uh, that's when the right friend introduced me to the right friend who gave me the right opportunity and I made more than what my salary was in, like six months and two weeks wow it was it was pretty cool it and was that was doing cool. the branding the sonic branding for including them. the sonic branding so the exercise in itself was complicated at first uh for me to really try to put it in there and now i do it the other way around now i make a sonic branding then the music but back then i made the music and tried to choose something catchy out of it to yeah. sort of call that the sonic branding because in my head i'm like i can get with it i can get away with that yeah. and i end up making something pretty cool so i i guess it worked out but like as soon as that project was done everything changed like quite literally overnight uh my ex-girlfriend uh yasmin at the time really really supported me i was you know chilling with her all the time and i was taken care of you know what i mean and i didn't have that feeling of constantly worrying whether or not i can you know keep my job remain mm. in the country all of these things that a lot of people have to go through i was lucky enough at that particular period of time to sort of you know like do my own thing and it worked mm. out and I had the right support from all my friends. I had the right support from my family and people just sort of cared about what I was working on. I mean, it was a tiny circle at the time. I wasn't even going public with it, but not that it mattered. You know, to me, it was just like, I got to do this. Mm. But the opportunity really opened up when I did a lot of it. When I got Global Village, for example, for example, uh, that, you know, blew my mind and it really sort of made me realize what exists there and how much I can benefit from it and create from that that point on. And it was, you know, when you're like, when you watch a movie with a bunch of guys in Vegas and then mm. there's that scene where everything is shadowy and hazy yeah. and then you just see them the next day. Trying waking to figure up. out what happened. Wha yeah. that's, been the, that's been the first three years for me in the country. Wow. Hands down. Um, one One step to another uh it was it was immense and intense mm. to maintain that without letting it get to your head mm. especially hearing yourself in public musically because i wasn't a voiceover at the time uh that that's a, the interesting story that came later uh but yeah that sort of shocked my mind and I, and I was doing a lot of research i wasn't sleeping well i wasn't eating well i was really uh honing my craft with the right people and i had so much on my mind in terms of how do you translate a brand mm. to sound exactly because that's what i was going to ask you what is what exactly is your process to kind of get a brand to get the idea and bring a brand to life because essentially essentially the, the i don't know a way a, a metaphor i can kind of do it is you're you're choosing the red devil for manchester united if you know what i mean yeah 100 like percent. that red devil that is, on that sign is basically gonna just an be icon the, yeah it's iconic so how do you Sit down and go, uh, all right. <laughs> oh, man. Where okay. Go? So, a lot of stories there. Yeah. A lot of stories there. But let, let me let me tell you. So, Sonic branding, to me, is what it's always been, in essence, with a little bit of pinch and salt. 
So sonic branding, as you know, is uh, listening to a melody that connects, you know, the brand with its audience. You hear it, you recognize it immediately. It creates a spontaneous and simultaneous connection with the brand. And that had to go back to what the brand stands for. So there wasn't any, no one taught me anything. No one told me this is the right way. No one, you know, like no one really held my hand through that period. It was Googling, YouTubing, and whatever info I can scrape from the internet with a lot of just do it. I was saying yes to things I should not have yeah, been yeah. saying. Just yes like whatever's to. coming. Like, yes. Literally, like, we want you to brand that Shatafa. Yeah, of course. No problem. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Exactly. And it's like, I got some opportunities where they'd be like, okay, but then can you can you deliver 15 songs and then X mm -hmm. and Y and Z in X period of time? Like, yeah. yeah of, course. of course. Of course I can. Of course. Fake it no you idea make it, how. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I No idea how, yeah. but like, I would deliver. Yeah. And during that period, I would argue myself that I was unbelievably creative. Like my body as a defense mechanism, the, the defense mechanism kicked in and I was creative so that I can create something. So I can get out of the things that I fear, you mm -hmm. know, like all the things I didn't want to go back to was what was driving me forward. Mm -hmm. And creativity was squeezed. My brain was just squeezed yeah, yeah? No, totally to get to get that juice yeah, out i totally get what you're saying because i've always been like that like that whole kind of you know i think most successful people are like that where they'll they'll just jump on whatever and take it like we're like we need an astronaut and i'm like yep <laughs> sort it out <laughs> I, in 48 I, I, hours i can do that like, like, no, no, no. so we you know how to fly the ship right yep <laughs> consider it done loads got my Lo wings loads of ships bro got my wings. Do you know what i mean and, and just figure it out when you get there because like, look, it doesn't work if you're just stupid and you're just like have no idea. But if you have a rough idea and oh, you're yeah. quite quick on your feet and, you're oh, quite, yeah. and you can and you can figure things out because some people are like that. Mentally, they can kind of figure things out very quickly. It's about creating something from nothing that mm. also uh, attracts and inspires in a unique way. And I give full, full gratitude to the music I listen to. Mm. I mean, when you ask me, OK, how did you? really figure out how to analyze things or whatever it's because i've been analyzing music since i was 15 16 because mm. i went from rock and metal and all of that and i was a little bit into like uh electro house and whatever when i was 15 16 when i started entering electronic music but then i discovered yeah, my I started drugs exactly. <laughs> <laughs> my, my mother might watch this so no comment no, whatsoever no comment. i'm sorry it's no not true. it's not true it's not true at all it's i was not, not inspired by yeah, lsd in any yeah, way shape yeah, or yeah. form at all thanks hoffman no so <laughs> yeah yeah. Basically, what happened is that I was introduced uh, by my best friend uh, into an artist called Aphex Twin, who is an experimental okay. electronic musician who, you know, I prayed around. I prayed around pretty yeah. much anywhere on my mask, on my even on my new car. I'm getting the logo in the back. Uh, so his music uh, sort of opened up my brain to what could be, most people could, would consider impossible. Yeah. And his styles of IDM, intelligent dance music, uh, break beat and drill and bass, which is more deeper than drum and bass and all that kind of stuff, sort of re rearranged my brain somehow mm. in a way that it was always meant to be that way. It was like a key that I was supposed to find on my journey in life. So it was like per a perfectly fitting key. And from that music, I got obsessed with this genre, IDM. And most people would be like, oh, you like EDM? I yeah, yeah, DM, yeah, yeah, I. Yeah. And then people would be like, what does IDM stand for? Be like, first letter. I, I, yeah. I hate saying <laughs> it, but it's like intelligent yeah. dance music. And people immediately. And that's why you don't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People take it so personal. Yeah, yeah. Like, even the artists are like, yeah, that's yeah. a shit name, but like, that's what it's called. Yeah. But like someone be like, Intelli how can music be intelligent, yeah. you yeah. know? And it's just because it's so complicated and like individualistic and yeah. each artist is crafting his own way through it mm -hmm. rather than following a, a cookbook of some sorts mm -hmm. in other genres in electronic music production. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a music producer. And at that time, I'm like, I could barely produce. I'm like, this is it. Yeah. This is it. And it really opened up my mind that I can pretty much do anything. I got into these guys like Aphex Twin, Boards of Canada, Flying Lotus, Mike Paradinas. Love you, Mikey. I know you're going to watch this. 
and also known as Yuzik, uh, and he owns Planet MU. Shout out to Planet MU. You're welcome, why are Mike you, Paradinas. Why are you looking at my camera? That's the camera that you should be looking at when oh. you're talking to people. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mike, sorry about that. <laughs> sorry about that, Mr. Then. Mike Paradinas. Uh, okay. Shout out to Planet MU, 3303 Records, uh, Sergio Garcias, who is also known as UFO, and these amazing musicians that have crafted incredible music. If you're watching this podcast, check out Afix Twin, check out UFO, and Bella Zoltan, also known as, uh, I forgot the name of his YouTube channel. His YouTube I'm channel. sorry, Bella. We are not promoting any other YouTube channels <laughs> on the Jabu channel. This is In a any way, shape, or form. Us. That's why I forgot <laughs> it. You made me forget it. You went into my head. Right? You're like, erase. That, that was my <laughs> subliminal message. So talk to me about how it is being, um, being a young guy and getting this kind of money as well, because <laughs> Sonic, no, because Sonic branding is not yeah. it's not like a, you know a dentist going hey we want you to do our logo for us yeah Sonic branding is is major work it is it, major it's, work it's yes. like uh, you know you can get a lot of money from from one piece of work yeah. which which people will be people will be like you got how much from yeah, just yeah, making yeah. A, because they don't understand behind it and how so for example this is the only time I'm going to promote it and I don't promote this for you to eating and it's not healthy and McDonald's is not sponsoring me but for example. Da, 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 da. I'm loving it. No one's ever forgetting that. Actually, I know. I don't know the guy that made it, but mm. I know the company where the guy worked. I think, if I'm not wrong, and I remember hearing or reading in an interview somewhere mm. about how much he made from that, and it was pennies. Really, pennies. It shocked me to the core just how famous that piece is and maybe how maybe he was like you in the beginning and going yep i'll take it I'll whatever take anything. yeah i'll take it yeah and the way it was because it was like actually there's a whole study about this but sonic branding there's a lot of adaptations mm. so it could be like in a more uh, khaliji style it could mm. be more american it could be more british it could be more yeah damn good damn yeah. good but yeah like mcdonald's whenever we do a lot of their work um they gave us a lot of different sonic endings, you know, yeah. like one more relaxing, yeah. one more this, one more yeah. this, one more that. And it shocked me that they that they produce just that much and yeah. anybody can do it. Just be like, here's a sonic, yeah. make an adaptation. The same way I worked on one of my sonics and they're like, this is the original one. Do us something yeah. better and new, but don't like change it completely. And I'm like, what? Yeah. And the amount of money that they agreed to pay me while literally doing the same thing yeah. is. You're like, I literally put up. At yeah. the end of it. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. It is mental. Yeah. And I made a whole concept around it and a PDF and a, sorry, a PowerPoint and I sold it, right? Yeah. And they're like, yeah, this is it. It's the same yeah. thing. It's the th just Anyway. Let, just let me know when you need the anyway. next one done. Anyway. I've got a really cool adaptation for this one. <laughs> That's <laughs> going to come next. I was, I just yeah. grabbed, I just grabbed the check like around two months later when I got it. And I just went there and I remember when I was talking to the lovely lady there, very, very lovely, humble lady. And she gave it to me and I was too excited. I was like shivering. Yeah. I wanted to open it. I wanted to yeah. see it. Like, we agreed on a price, but I wanted to see it. Yeah. You're like, they're never yeah. going to pay me. The there, no way. Yeah. And then I opened it like, woo, there we go. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh, there we go. I don't <laughs> usually get erections in public. <laughs> you know, but this one's like, yeah. a little bit yeah. different. It's one that's where you walk, walk exactly. away. Exactly. You walk away a little bit like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not yeah, losing yeah. this yeah, shit, yeah. you know? I was like putting it in my soul. Yeah. And then, yeah, so basically with, with Sonic branding, uh, what I intended to do originally was to sort of make music because I've always wanted to be a, a, like a, a producer that makes this complicated music like mm. these guys I just mentioned and be like considered somebody who really innovated something in their own way. Mm. And I had a fear of never achieving that. And also the fear of never making money <laughs> exactly of <laughs> until course until you achieve it which exactly. is always like you know whenever somebody's doing something it's like yeah i'm gonna be broke for a long time dude yeah. i've made so many investments that i thought this is gonna get me something out mm. of it and then it doesn't and then at the very last second mm. some like uh, grace falls from heaven and mm. saves me you mm. know but basically because i wanted to make that music and stuff i always like again i was like uh, afraid that you know it's not gonna happen and then now i've I'm extremely content because I have done it just mm. in my own little way, in my own different way. But it does saddens me that I'm not making my own music, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Very much saddens mm. me. But mainly it's the, the complexity behind uh, making something extremely unique more than the just for the for the heck of it, just for mm. because it's complex. It's supposed to be cool. No, not really. Mm. It's that vibe. It's that personality that it brings with it. Um, and that's who I am. I consider myself to be a musician first and foremost. And, uh, you know, some of the sonic brandings I've worked on that got to be a little bit known is the one for For Humanity, the vaccine, mm. the 
for humanity. Yeah. That one. And then there's Switch yeah. TV for it is a lot. And then the other it's a lot one. And, you know, a lot of stuff. The it is a lot together matters that people hear all the time. And I uh, heard that two weeks so, ago. But where did alive. you go into vo doing the voiceovers? Because Sonic branding and voiceover is different. Right? I, I decided to mix, to mix them. them together. I, only recently. Okay. So this is only in the past three, two, yeah, two, two, three years. But like the voiceover thing happened. So here's what happened. While I was doing all of that, I had a good friend who really looked out for me. And he's an awesome guy, genuinely. One of the best bassists the Middle East has seen, right? Mm. The guy's a proper musician. And my lack of musical education is like, okay, you got something, you're talented, clearly you've done all these things, but like, you gotta get into that. And he was pushing me. And then he introduced me to this guy. He's like, you gotta meet this guy. And uh, massive shout out to Ahmad Ghanou, my business partner in Mindloop Studios, the founder, and love you, Ahmad. Hope you watched this far. And basically, me and this guy really, really clicked off, you know? And I, I went into his company, Mind Loop, and I fell in love with it. The vibe, the people. And I started getting introduced to proper commercial work in terms of like radio ads and stuff like that, which I didn't have a lot of exposure to at the time. Mm -hmm. I knew of them. I was researching them, but I wasn't in the thick of it. And when he got me on board, uh, around four or five months of running his company, I decided to make it my own. And we had that chat and, you know, it worked out. At we, what age was that? This is at 23. So 23 and owning. 23 and oh, owning yeah, your own company. Yeah, around 24. Yeah, December 23. Successful so, yeah. company as well. Not yeah, just like 21 years old. 21 year old company at the moment. And he saw me like worthy enough and caring enough. And, you know, I came with the right stuff, with the right mindset, the right investment. And it just made sense for both of us. Mm. Uh, we restructured the whole team. Uh, we practically rebuilt the company. And then I sort of started taking it slowly and slowly over from him and now i pretty much fully run it uh, he still helps me out here and there but yeah i mean he's he's taught me he's guru'd me basically mm -hmm. he's groomed me to know how to handle it and uh, i took that on board and while i was doing that i was pretty much you know the producer i was uh, managing then i got another manager there was a lot of you know, systematic rebuild because when you learn how to run a company when you're mm. a kid, it's uh, and an actual company with a with a you know like an actual you know reputation. So you can't like you can't fuck that up. And you it's know, not from scratch, you're actually taking over something that's already exactly. Yeah. So yeah. you can't like you know, and I couldn't make those entrepreneur first timer mistakes that one would get away with when they're doing their own thing. People would understand. But with a brand like this, a, a studio like this, it, it, there was a little bit too much flame. And now my blood's on it, right? My name's on it. So mm -hmm. it, it sort of uh, it took me by surprise that I had to grow up very, very fast. And it wasn't the first time I had to grow up extremely fast and allow myself to seep into that. I mean, you know, might not be the best manager and all that, but like I get work done and I get the clients and I, and I don't just sell. I really genuinely deliver. We deliver. We really take care of people. Mm -hmm. And when he saw that, when my business partner saw that, he's like, all right, you take over, man, you're good. Mm -hmm. And that, that's been going on for two years. So during that period to talk about the voiceover stuff, um, what happened was around three years ago, my clients used to ask me to, you know, as I was doing the sonic branding and the music and whatever, and I was doing all those amazing stuff I'm very grateful for. Uh, a lot of the voiceovers were, none of them were me. And then some, like some scripts, it would be like, say a 30 second radio ad. Mm -hmm. They'd be like, can you check if this fits in 30 seconds? So I would try, I, I would speak like this and try to blah, 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 it's too fast. And one thing led to another. And then like one, one of my clients at the time, uh, shout, shout out to Tarek from Classic Partnership for choosing my voice for- uh, am, am I getting paid for all of these <laughs> shout outs? Here? Because a lot of people are getting shout outs on this episode. All deserve yeah, it, yeah. genuinely deserve it. And what happened was, it's like, oh, you know, the client liked your voice. I decided to send it and why don't you do it? Mm -hmm. This is, yeah, I'm 27 now. So this is around 23, 24. And I'm like, me do it? He's like, yeah, like you can just, you know, record yourself and send it over. And so I did that and they liked it. They really liked it. And at that time I had no idea what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Then I did a lot of like here and there until I got Maldi Emirates uh, from the agency that were, you know, best friends. And uh, they're like, uh, they really like your voice and they'd like to use it moving forward for X period of time. I'm like, what do you mean X period of time? She's like, you're the voice for X period of time. That's it. All the ads are with you. You give us a good deal. I'm like, yeah. And then I started, you know, developing my voice from there and understand because I was recording hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of voiceovers. Yeah. So I knew everything, you know, like when they talked, when they took a breath, like I just picked it up, you know. And because I have a tradition of teaching myself everything, this was no different. It was exactly the same. 
started doing some stuff. And then uh, my client was like, listen, can you start deepening your voice? I'm like, what do you mean deepening my voice? Mm. I have a very, very, you know, like, what do you, what do you mean? And then I started like doing a lot of exercises and saying, oh, oh. And then when I discovered that, oh, mm, mm, oh no, welcome to Moldy Emirates. Yeah. From the 27th of July all the way to the 3rd of June, Moldy Emirates welcomes you. So when that came into fruition, and I was played a lot. A lot of my clients took notice and they're like, that was you? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. And people wouldn't believe that the person you who never looks get like the guy this. You sitting there in shorts and <laughs> flip flops on and sitting there doing that voice. Because you picture it to be like a, a mature a man. A mature yeah, prop, yeah. 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 So this I, guy sitting there wearing a vest and he's in one, like one of those, you know, when you're in the paddling pool and you have the ring around you, just sitting there with pretty a drink much, and a straw. <laughs> pretty like, much, yeah. pretty much. So when I did all that, you know, my clients started taking notice and a lot of people started like giving me work. And then Dubai airports approached me and they're like, why don't we do that with you? Just make you the voice for the PA system, like the public announcements. Mm. So like when you go in, I don't know if they're still using it, especially after COVID, but like for two years at least, even I traveled and heard that, mm. you go in and be like, welcome to Dubai airports. Please make sure that you keep your luggage on you. Like all, all of those mm. PAs, I don't remember much. Uh, I did like seven, eight of them. You are a man. You are a man. You are finally in a country where nobody <laughs> suspects you of leaving a suitcase anywhere. It's insane, man. Feel free and enjoy your time at enjoy our Enjoy your airport. time at yeah. our hands. When yes. you get to London, everything changes. So be safe, <laughs> be careful, and welcome back. It's insane just how like easy it started becoming to me and yeah. these gigs started but i i strongly think all that happened because of mind loop because i sort of controlled the demand mm. because the clients came to me directly instead of to someone and then they got a voice got, yeah. so i had that's that's what made the difference let's be real you mm. know that's i mean i would have found another way i'm yeah, not exactly. gonna say i wouldn't have found but that really sort of skyrocketed me in front of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other voices who are probably better than me you know what i mean they're probably better but like I got that sorted and I gave it the love, I gave it the attention and I gave it the growth it, it deserved. And then after that, dude, it was it was pretty cool because I started getting approached a lot and stuff like that. And at some point I started really modulating my voices yeah. and I tell my client, okay, do you want it like that? Or yeah. do you want it like this? Or do you want it like that? So like when I did that and it goes a little bit like this, check this out. <sighs> Marhaban bikum ala Tehran, Emirat. <clears throat> Welcome to Dubai Expo 2020. It is a lot. Together matters. With National Geographic, we bring you what's important. And then I go all the way up. The new Nature Valley Health Bar. You keep it on you and you lose two centimeters all the way down. Across the chains and then some. And then I go all the way down. I tell you, welcome to the online Toyota experience. We hope you enjoy your time. And a lot of yeah. others. Yeah, it's just kind of weird because you do a lot of voices, but nobody knows it's you. Is that a bit shitty sometimes? Like, because <laughs> you do the Dubai Metro, right? Yeah, so. So you could be sitting there and you know what? Subconsciously, you could get a lot of Filipino girlfriends because yeah. they hear your voice every day. They use the metro. They use the metro a lot. Yeah, they so, do. So they you're do. actually there. You won't seem like a stranger. Yeah. So yeah. you'd be like, "Hey, can I have your number?" Can <laughs> She'll I have be like, "Your number." I know this voice. Ah, <laughs> uh, has a soul. Exactly. So basically, what happened with the Dubai Dubai metro is the craziest thing, right? So around two and a half years ago, mm. I was doing a lot of stuff for Kafu Points, which is a taxi thing for RTA. Mm. And I was doing a lot of that and I was really enjoying it. And my main motive was the more I did, the more I saved money because like the company's mine. Stuff. I mean, so, you say save money, but uh, we'll, exactly. talk about, we'll talk about that soon, bro, <laughs> because we've had to have a sit down, a big brother conversation recently. A big recently. brother conversation yeah. about we'll, that. We'll, we'll go into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So basically what happened was um, I started doing that and stuff and then I got the tram, which is what I used to take years ago when mm. I used to live with my brother in JBR. And I'm like, what? They're like, yeah, like we're not changing all of it. Just the new stuff that we're that we're building. We need new voices for it because the people that are doing it are not available. The studio's not available. And then I found out that my studio had recorded the previous oh, people, wow. and that blew my mind. And I'm like, oh no wait. So my studio's done like the old metro, like the original guys who are still on the metro. Obviously, I only do a few stations, but like it came through us, and that blew my mind yeah. when I found that out by mistake on one of the hard drives. So anyway, I started doing the tram and I started going to people and telling them what I do. And that's when I'm like, I went to them and I'm like, the next station is Jumeirah Lake. And what was it? Jumeirah uh, Beach Residence. Mm -hmm. The next station is Jumeirah Beach Residence. So like when I did a few of those, it was some change, man, mm -hmm. in me, you know, mm -hmm. like I can approach these things and they're very serious. You got to sign some papers. You got to go through some stuff. 
So after I did that, uh, they were like, okay, we're building some new stuff for Dubai Metro. We're changing the sound design in it and yada, yada, yada. Can you provide us with everything? And, you know, just go ahead and do it. I'm like, mm, okay. And I just went ahead and I looked at my team. And I'm like, guys, guess what? They're like, what? I'm like, I'm doing the Metro now. They're like, no way. Because every time I get a new gig, there's like, no way you're going to get another. Yeah. And then I did the big one and I went in, I was recorded. Uh, and, you know, they gave me some advice on how to do it. So like, yeah. Yeah. doors opening, doors closing. Now, obviously with the CCIT, you know, because you convert yeah, yeah. it, it gets yeah, yeah. dapped down, but you can easily tell it's me. Yeah. And yeah, like that, that sort of changed even more. And I'm like, God damn, like, I went all out. That was around a year ago. I started going all out. Like, mm. I'm going all out. I'm going, you know, putting this and that. And that's when I started getting a lot of publicity. I was picked up by uh, Arabian Business, The National. Uh, was picked up. I was picked up by quite a few. I went on the cover of Arabian Business in September. I uh, got some. Uh, I went on Arabia. I went on Al-Hurra on TV. I went on uh, radio a few times with a bunch of, you know, uh, stations. Uh, shout out to all of them. Thanks, guys. And... Uh, <laughs> This guy's gonna fucking shout out everyone but this podcast, bro. Shout out, shout out, shout yeah. out to yeah. Ahmed yeah, yeah, yeah. and awesome Jibber with yeah, Jabber. Go, Respect. Go. Thanks no, for no, having no. me, really. No, no. Uh, very, very grateful. I will send you the invoice for all of these people <laughs> after that. No, no, yeah. So, like, I, yeah, I started, like, really, like, uh, getting into that and, you know, like, the whole public. <laughs> and I, I denied it at first. Like, I didn't want it, but I knew deep down it's important and I mm. should sort of do it. And when I saw myself on the cover of a magazine, that was it, man. I mean, mm. Like, uh, like Arabian business is a big deal. Yeah, yeah. People pay a lot of money for it. And I did it for free. And I, and I got it for free as a gift. You know, like, you've earned this. So that's what sort of set my brain in the right place moving forward. Because I, I've, I'm earning stuff, right? Yeah. And that sort of made me realize the sky's the limit, man. Well, look, if you ever find that the Metro needs like a, 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 <laughs> a Cockney English guy who wants to do this stuff, I'm, I'm if they very wanna, good, you know. If they want to go with, with, you know, with, with British again, look, I'll let you know. There's a lot of people that come here, all these drunk <laughs> English people that come here and they go and they ruin the bloody hotels and the five palm and all that stuff. They need someone who sounds like a drunk <laughs> English guy. Like, oh, wait, where's your fucking ticket, mate? Come here, come here, where are you? <laughs> you know, just to make it kind of like so they feel at home, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Okay, okay. Yeah, the valid point. The valid point. Welcome, welcome to Dubai. They didn't fucking catch you. you come on, go through the thing, get your bags, and go and have a good time, mate. You know, you need these kind of things. We you got Bengo. We have a Nigerian one there. If you need some voiceovers, bro, we do everything, bro. We'll talk, brother. We'll yeah, talk. That's it. So, like, a lot of that came together with me, and it's just I decided to situate myself as the voice of multiple brands. Mm. And what I did is I stopped doing any project-based voiceovers yeah. and started only doing mainly like uh on contract for x amount of periods of times yeah. and i don't know if many people have done that before i'm sure there are but like i got to be in that situation that fast while mm. usually as a voiceover you need to have five ten years of experience and i had like one mm. <laughs> and it was all innovated and all my own and all created from scratch and hardies go all in <laughs> yeah. so like see like even that like i, I you know I, I did all these things and you know there's you know, there's a lot of brands I'd love to say, like, yeah. maybe I'm the voice of I'm loving it, but I'm not going to say yeah. I'm not going to say anything yeah. about buying the new spicy chicken from McDonald's. Yeah. I'm not going to talk about that. Don't do it, don't do it. It's not it. even me. Right. Yeah, it's dude, not look, even me. It's not you, even me. You know what you need to do, bro? <laughs> and you can thank me later. I, you need to start teaching people how to do voiceovers, like have a school where you teach people how to do that stuff. Way ahead of you. They don't call this jib with jabber for nothing. <laughs> so... Here's what's going on. Okay. While I was doing all this, and my especially my friends, my personal friends were really taking notice because I started becoming much, much, much more comfortable putting yeah. it up online, talking about it, and people went from not knowing about it to hearing my shit on a daily basis, you mm -hmm. know? And I can imagine my story, someone open like, he's gonna do a fucking voice. Yeah, yeah. And then they yeah. listen to it, and then, then they go to watch a video on YouTube, and then they hear me there, and they're like, fucking hell, I was just on his profile. Like, it, I just sort of positioned myself to be everywhere and what happened was uh some of my friends uh especially one of my friends who was an awesome person she came to me she's like listen i work in this place and i can sort of help you out with the marketing but in return i want you to teach me how the hell you do all this and i'm like and she's a good friend so she wasn't treating me like oh my god you're the voice of whatever she's just my friend you know mm -hmm. and i'm like okay but all right but like how and she's like you figure it out 
So what happened was, very funny story, I was at the studio uh, around 7 p.m. and I had promised her the next morning at 10 a.m. sharp she would come and I would start her first lesson. Again, I say yes to everything, literally, you know, like the the account. I want free lessons. <laughs> say it. <laughs> say it. We will be offering. Say it. <laughs> you got free lessons, say bro. It. You got it. He says yes to everything. <laughs> it's, His phone number is zero five five. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> it's zero yeah. five zero. Yeah. So basically what happened was um, I, I had one of those nights where the Fucking like the Messiah came on. Oh, we, like, can't, oh, we can't oh. fucking swear on this podcast. Oh yeah. No, oh, we can't. Oh, fuck, fucking fuck hell. That. I'm so fucking sorry. No, I'm not. Gonna, I'm not gonna do it again. Don't fucking. Fucking my fuck bad. Sake, my dude. fucking bad, bro. Have we gone past ten minutes? It's only ten minutes. <laughs> I don't get paid in the first ten minutes. If we swear. <laughs> I said, have we fucking gone past ten minutes? Because I can't swear in the first ten minutes, bro. <laughs> fuck's sake Benga. all right good. so basically what happened was uh i really felt this rush of all of the things i've done all of the things i've learned all the things mm. on an experience level what i've learned because i didn't have any training right it was straight in the thick of it mm. and i put all that on an on a 12-week program at first like what do you need what is the difference between a radio advertisement a tv commercial an online a documentary uh characters doing biceps mm. and everything and everywhere in between so when I did all of that, uh, it's sort of like, it was hard to, how do I say this? It was hard to put it in one place, but I did. Mm -hmm. I put it in a 12 week program that explained bit by bit an introduction to the voiceover. What is a voiceover? What is a voice actor? The different types, the different elements that go into it. What is your voice capable of? Can we identify the tones that you can have? The same way I go down and go all the way back up mm -hmm. and then all Second the one definitely sounds like a criminal, bro. <laughs> you sound like you're a <laughs> dodgy guy. Give me your guy. stuff, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm taking it. Going yeah. away. Just the way yeah. I talk, see? It's yeah. just like in the 50s. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man, it was so cool to just sort of put that down on paper. And then next, okay, next we need to assess where you're at. We need to mm. give you some examples to practice. And then how do you analyze the script? How do you, you know, what are some tricks and techniques that can get you there faster that I've picked up during sessions, you know, like mm. in lifetime. So I combine all that information and I went in and I talked to my <laughs> talked to my partner at the time, like, you know, man, this is what I'm happening, whatever, whatever. And I, I ended up becoming a little bit non sober, went, had a few drinks, came back through the whole night. I don't even remember. I rolled this entire twelve weeks. Yeah. Woke up in the morning, swear to God. Woke up in the morning, uh seven maybe, seven thirty. The light woke me up because it hit my face. I was sleeping on a tiny couch mm. in my room. Uh, what used to be my room. I don't even have a room now, too many employees. But yeah, uh, I sort of like woke up there in a fet fetal position, like <sighs> happened. Went to the computer, it was still on uh, sleep mode. I pressed the space bar, opened up, entered the password, there it was, 12 week program. And do people get um, like, uh, what's it called when you have a, a reel, like a voice reel or? Yeah, it's called a voice reel. Yeah, yeah, pretty so, much got it right on track. Uh, right on yeah. track, right on track. So basically, I offer six demos, okay. either either three in one language and three in the other, or like six in this language or six in that language. And I offer insights on uh, who to work with. And I'm proud okay. to say that, competitors, yeah. on who to work with and not to work with. you've got them all already. And yeah. I know them all, and I know all my competitors, and I know how much they charge. I know everything. I know who doesn't pay on time. I know who doesn't take care of their voiceovers, mm. right? Right? I'm not going to say your name. Yeah? Mm. Yeah. Mm. So... <laughs> well, names will now be going up on the screen. <laughs> it's going to be like Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> you see the thing? <laughs> <laughs> 100%, you got it. So basically, you know, I started like knowing all of this information. And when I sat down and I told someone what I was building and this thing, and when I told this to this girl I was teaching, she was like, do you come up with this overnight? I'm like, yeah. It's like, there's no way in hell. And she literally insisted on paying me at that point. She's like, listen, I'll give you the account. I'll push you because she's the marketing manager. Mm -hmm. It's her call to tell her producers yeah. where to go. So uh, sort of like, you know, I'm, I'm going to pay you for this. How much do you want? Like 3K? She's like, that's it? I'm like, 5K, 5K. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, still, I'm still a bit drunk. I'm, I'm still, like, you know, just still from yeah. yesterday. Yeah. And I immediately realized how immediately how much it was worth yeah. and after i taught her she told her friends her friends thought it was cool i made a you know very flexible payment plan it mm. supported mind loop and all of those kind of things and it started growing from there and expensive like like it, uh, 
unbelievably man seriously mm. and then i started realizing and tweaking the program because it's a custom program so each person sits down with me i give them an assessment on what they require I ask them very weird questions like mm. i had this woman who grown-up woman has kids and i was telling her listen the assessment's gonna be a little bit weird mm. so don't worry about these questions just answer as honestly as you can mm. and we'll be fine she's like yeah i'll be fine I'm like, have you cried in class? She's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, what does that have to do with anything? I mean, it has to do with everything because it's because you're performing. You got to know when you're under pressure, how to deliver, how to talk to a client, all those kind of things. Yeah. And when I did all of that, it's sort of like, you know, it made sense to the person who sat with me. Mm. And then I created their own unique program. I can show you any of my 37 students. None of the programs are that 38. <laughs> 38 <laughs> none of the programs are the same yeah. in a way you'd be like oh like damn that's actually pretty cool like mm -hmm. every person has his own like this guy has a fear and and he's thought he's like stutters articulation he doesn't have control over his own voice the other guy he loses focus too quick he this he this and that an infinite amount of possibilities mm -hmm. and the kids oh my goodness the kids i i love them but jesus christ mm -hmm. i've taught like six kids because obviously the moms want them to get them into this thing and i started like really just you know word of mouth basically and before i knew it i was 20 students and i was charging 15 20 thousand dirhams per person and people mm -hmm. were still paying for it because it, it was worth it. It was genuinely worth it. It's like doing 10 to 15 jobs. You can, you, I mean, and I always said this. And mm. when people ask me like, why is it so much or whatever? I'd be like, listen, if you're not paying 15,000 dirhams, it means you cannot get 15 jobs. Say a job is a thousand dirhams. Mm. If you don't think you can get 15 jobs in your investment, you should not be a voiceover. Mm. And that's the end of that. Mm. Because you're giving them everything. The demos, the, the word of mouth, the correct studios to talk to. You're helping them. You're holding their hand. And then at some point I'm like, I can't do this. And I started getting teachers and I taught teachers who have like 20 plus years of experience how to, how to teach. And I'm like, I'm out. And then it just sort of started out. And then I started thinking like, I can expand this to audio, video, photography, anything, you know, podcasts, like mm. anything, how to build your own podcast properly. Mm. Now, obviously there's a lot of stuff on YouTube, but it could be based on what you require. Yeah. And this formula, this assessment formula I've made, including what I call the speedy system, which was inspired by McDonald's, mm. Uh, I'd love to show you this. So check this out. This is called the speedy system, all right? So the speedy system has nothing to do with the speed of voice. Mm -hmm. It's basically, uh, how do I explain this? It's sort of like getting to the best possible scenario as fast as possible, regardless of what the client asks, in a way that shows you have a lot more experience than you do. Mm -hmm. And I came up with it because McDonald's had their speedy system from the movie The Founder mm -hmm. in the 60s, where they, you know, put the charcoal and whatever, like it, the burger starts here and then the grill's here and like, you know, in one minute, it's at the customers. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's amazing. And I came up with the system and it's divided into two things. It's basically the right hand is um, the intensity or the tone per se that you want to focus on. You have to mix it because it's indiv individualistic. The left hand is the emotion. So say up is me going all the way up mm -hmm. and up here is me going all the way up. So high emotion, like happy emotion or energetic with a high tone. But if I go like this, I am still all the way up in terms of energy, but I'm perfectly in the middle right now, perfectly in the middle. And then when I go down, I go down, but my energy is there. The next summer, take this movie and enjoy it for whatever it is. It's a piece of shit made by some guy who had a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And then when I go all the way down, I'm still here down, but then in the middle there. And then I go all the way down and now I'm going down and I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. I honestly don't understand what's going on, but seriously. I'm just going down and I don't understand. But you know what? Maybe it's going to be an okay day. Maybe it's going to be better. Maybe it's going to be incredible. And maybe it's going to be even incredible on the next day. So please always follow us. Make sure that you're with us and always remember yourself. You do realize that you've just given me 18 different thumbnails for this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> and you're going to be like that in one of them at least. That's definitely what's going to do it. Okay, so that's, that's what you're doing now. Yeah, so basically I'm creating with the right people because i'm doing the voiceover mm. stuff but i'm getting other teachers and other yeah. professionals who have stood out in the market on a unique level to help me i mean the audio is done we've produced um, a program for post-production and music production nice. and advertisement this is strictly a sort of like a creative advertisement thing and then we're going to work on photography and videography to launch by end of 2022 and i'm launching this company called on the field on the field creative training field uh training training center whatever 
uh, on December. Uh, okay. And it already has over almost 40 students by then in terms of voiceovers and where they have two audio people we're working on. Mm -hmm. So we're testing it, the, testing the waters. And when we're testing a new program, we charge pennies, like mm -hmm. a thousand or two, and you get the whole thing just so we can sort of tweak it out. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm working on, on the field, because, you know, my voice got on these and I've been on all these like articles and interviews and yada, yada, yada. And I embraced that I'm willing to be this guy. Mm -hmm. I think that's what happened. So what pushed you to kind of do this? What kind of life experiences did you have that kind of oh. made you a... Uh... So that's what pretty much changed everything. Excuse me. That's fine. Uh, uh, you know, we'll also talk about something that's going to change everything after. <laughs> a couple of days. But yeah, that's good. So um, let me talk about these guys because I want to. Mm -hmm. There was a guy, uh, awesome guy. His name's Ahmad Deeb. Same as our name. Ginger. Definitely awesome if his name's Ahmed, bro. It goes, it goes guy. without saying. Incredible guy. Mm. Ahmad Deeb uh, has been my best friend, Ahmad Deeb, and a guy called Basil Kashtan, also my best friend, and Mohamed Lamar. We were like a clique. And uh, we were inseparable. I met these guys when I was five, six. So they're like the OGs, right? Now, Basil ended up going to Canada, haven't seen him in 10 years, missed the hell out of him. And me and Ahmed and Muhammad were sort of together all the time, but also not. But we're like always go back to each other. And when I was like seven, eight, nine, my first sleepovers were with Basil and Muhammad and Ahmed and all that. And at some point, I realized this guy, Ahmed, Muhammad was like the silly guy. Mm. Basil's like the rapper. And Ahmed was mm. like the genius. Mm. He was incredibly smart, spoke like three, four languages by the time it was like 13, 14. Uh, got, he got into electronic music way before me. He got into production way before me. At like 12, 13, he was like, you know, his family's well off, so they got him whatever the hell mm. he wanted. And he got whatever the hell he wanted, you know? But he put him into use. He was scoring movies when he was 14 for his friends in Canada and whatever who were like wow. insane. And he was a very open-minded guy. I mean, very open-minded guy. And he was like the closest person to me. And then the other guy, Muhammad, was always with us. He was the chill and the rapper and the funny, and not sort of like best as a rapper too, but Muhammad's more like the silly, right? the silly guy. And Ahmed sort of complimented us in a way that he was like the wisdom guy. Mm. Like when you hear a 14 year old kid talk about climate change before the world does, it's the guy was onto something. Mm. So he, re he got me into Aphex Twin. He got me into everything. I owe everything to this guy. But unfortunately when I was, uh, about 18, a few months before actually, uh, we were coming back from Beirut and there was no light on the highway. Thanks, Lebanon. And uh, big thanks, guys. And we were, yeah, so what happened was I was sleeping in the back and Ahmad was driving, Muhammad was driving. Everybody's fine. No one's drunk. No, mm. one, not, everyone's fine, you know, which makes this even sadder. Like everyone was all right. So anyway, uh, we're coming back around two, three in the morning and then, uh, pfft, I remember hearing shouting and breaks and stuff, and then I felt the G-force when we fell from the bridge all the way down. Yeah, I was like five stories, building stories. And uh, that, I mean, ha before we got there, I was gone. Uh, my body felt like, and this is a very hidden memory. I can barely, maybe I'm even coming up with it. Like that's mm -hmm. how deep it is, right? So uh, it's a trauma, dude. So basically uh, when that happened, I woke up uh, quite a while later after my coma. Yeah, I, I was in a coma. So the car, fell off the bridge yeah, yeah yeah and uh both of the guys are gone wow uh and then when i woke up my lovely mother my adorable mother because this eye was shut uh because of this here and i almost lost this eye if it wasn't for two centimeters and my hand is gone my leg as you can see everything and i was sleeping like this and basically what happened was uh, i woke up in a room that had a tiny red light at the very end on the left mm. and my mom i saw a silhouette of my mom with barely any light coming out of there. And I was like, very, uh, what's going on, right? And then my mom rushes towards me and literally screams, are you fucking happy now? You happy with this? Because she, she traveled to France two weeks before and she's like, don't do anything yeah. until I'm back, right? Like, don't do it because she trusted me with everything. And I, I did that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And then the doctor came and was like, you're, you're, you have no idea how lucky you are to be alive. And he was trying to talk to me, but it was all... I couldn't understand much. Mm. You get me? I was uh, I was trying to understand. How long were you in a coma for? Two months. Well, two months. And I realized I couldn't move my body anymore. Like I couldn't move my legs or my hands. And it's like everything was extremely heavy and I had no feeling in anything. So I panicked. 
I'm like, can I move my hand? He's like, relax and whatever. There was a lot of crying initially, uh, a lot. And then at some point, my my my, I looked at the doctor. I'm like, Ahmad, Muhammad, just uttering their names, right? Mm -hmm. And then my mom was like, tell him, tell him, tell him. And then the doctor's like, just ma'am, it should be said better than this. Yeah. And she's like, no, yeah. let him take it. And then it's like, they're they're gone. Wow. And I'm like, what? What month is it? What day is it? Like literally. And then I spent, yeah, a year and a half, uh, had to learn how to walk again. My back was broken, leg was broken, left hand, uh, shoulder, uh, my spleen's gone. Uh, that's why I don't even drink, to be honest, because I don't have a spleen. Go straight to the liver, not making yeah. that guy work, yeah. you know, <laughs> working double shifts. So, uh, and I was told I was a one in a billion case. And this is the the stuff that, uh, that you're going to love that I didn't tell you personally, and I'm going to tell you on your podcast. I survived after 46 seconds of heart failure without medical assistance. I came wow. back to life. Wow. I actually have documentation in my house, in my mom's closet that says your son's pretty much Don't dead. show up. I do that like three <laughs> times a week. Anyway, did you not see me in the ice bucket the other day? My balls and my heart stopped beating. I did see that. Lovely episode. No, yeah. Lovely wow, episode. that's crazy. But yeah, I pretty much died for 46 seconds. And that's when uh, a lot of religious groups were, were visiting me after a month or two of being there and recovering. And uh, everybody well, they thought you were the second coming. They, they actually asked me if there was another life. I'm, I, I shit you not. Oh, I'm dead nice. serious. Like, what did you see? What like, okay. oh, what did you see? bro? Fucking nothing. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. You don't play now. You're so, gone. You're so done. You so don't, you don't remember. There you go. You don't remember anything. Nah. for the even for the nah, coma. Nah, nah, nah. You don't remember nah, hearing nah, nah, anything. Nah, nah. You don't I remember. remember waking up during the coma per se because i wasn't on a bed at the time i was on a surface like this mm. and seeing my dad there and when people saw me open my eyes everybody rushed and yeah that was like four or five seconds and mm. i saw my dad my dad was collapsing basically and then moving on to the next scene literally Your a mom movie. Was there going <laughs> <laughs> i don't think my mom was there i mm. don't recall my mother being there i should ask her but i do mm. not recall I, I, it was my brother wasim and my and my father so when I woke up, woke up and I had like a lot of psychological analysis and, uh, you know, like uh, really trying to understand what's going on with me, a psychiatrist and a psychologist and all that. And I came up in the green like I'm fine. Like they were so shocked that I was fine that they were doing tests on whether or not I'm faking all this mm. just because I'm so positive. And. I like, was yeah, the x-ray of my broken back probably <laughs> shows that I wasn't faking it. <laughs> Dude, it's been uh, very interesting, very emotional, very, um, very <laughs> nice to have you on the show. It's been very nice. I think we should, uh, <laughs> we should end with a voiceover. So I would like you oh. to describe the glove as an advert All right. as we finish the show. And I will say goodbye to them. All right. Have you ever walked around the street and just thought to yourself, I want this all done, but not all of it, only half of it. Now you can pick up the Thor gauntlet. Is that what it's called? Pick yeah. The gauntlet, right? Pick up the Thor gauntlet and make sure that you take care of 50% of all of the universe. Don't like that ex-girlfriend of yours? Gone. Don't like the, your uncle who abused you when you were young? Gone. Don't like the guy who told you that he's going to pay for the wings, but he never did? Gone. Buy the new Thor... <laughs> Buy the new Thor gauntlet, available now, only for 13,1415. Elon Musk, please help. <laughs> Guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, Jibur Jabba. Ahmed, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show today. We'll get another one going because I feel like there's still a lot of things that we, we need to yeah, cover. Absolutely. But it's been eight hours on this episode and uh, <laughs> I'm hungry and I need to take a shit. So <laughs> uh, no, no, no. It's, been, it's, been, it's been really cool and uh, a real eye opener to what, what goes on behind the scenes of all this stuff because uh, I'm sure many people can go, yeah, I can do that. Look, all I can say is for right now, there's a lot coming out. Uh, mm. There's a lot of publicity I'm doing about me that's coming out because I want to get the right story out there. You can Google my name in English and Arabic and you'll find me, Victor Magazine, The National, you name it. Um, but what I want to, what I really want to say is that on the field, this this little academy thingy I'm building is supposed to be two years of experience in two months or three months. That's mm. the whole selling point and something that really genuinely focuses on the person rather than the curriculum. Yeah. And because I, I'm in a unique situation where I grew up like that, where I grew up making my own curriculum per se, I find myself to be the right person to innovate this thing. Obviously, it'll take years to really develop, but you know, it needs to start somewhere, it needs to grow somewhere. 
So this is really what I want to leave people with so that they can really uh, understand deep down that you can pretty much do whatever you want and the money comes. Not talking about the money. Mm. It comes and then one day you might go in the same slippers I'm wearing and literally buy a supercar. Like that's you can exactly. do that. You can exactly. actually do that. So enjoy yourselves. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And always remember, Air Arabia, we're next. <laughs> <laughs>